Welcome, guys, to another episode of A1 Agents. You guys might know this guy. He's on YouTube, just like me. Uh, is my good friend, Chris Constantini. Uh, Constantini, my bad, my right. bad. Good job. And a little bit about Chris. If you guys don't know who he is, Chris started in the insurance industry when he was only 18 years old. And three years later, he decided to start his own independent brokerage. He's been growing not only his insurance agency, but his YouTube channel as well, while adding a ton of value to insurance agents all over the world. He's well on his way to building a $20 million insurance agency while teaching everyone that follows him how to do it as well. Chris, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it, man. No, that was a great intro, making me, <laughs> making me sound good. The 20 million is not there yet. Uh, it's going to be there at one day, and that's definitely the goal. And um, yeah, man, definitely trying to keep, you know, the process documented. So uh, from day one, um, the YouTube channel, you can see me in like a tiny little 200 square foot green wall office that I was just sharing out of like some, um, you know, real estate office that they, for some reason, had a green wall. I think it was for like different backdrop um, work. So I started there, man. And like, yeah, it's been now almost four years in with the independent agency and um, helping a few agents along the way. So yeah, man, that's, that's the goal here. Trying to, trying to do it big, like the big boys, you know? So you're, you're well on your way, man. And I can totally see your passion for the industry. You're very consistent. I, I can see, um, I've seen your growth over the last, um, you know, year and we've interviewed some of the same people. This yeah. was only a matter of time before you and I connected. This is the first conversation we've ever had together besides little messages here on social media. Yeah. But we're certainly a cut from the same cloth. We're both adding value to the insurance industry. We're both documenting our journey because we're still the little guys you know I, yeah. I I still feel like we're just the little fish in the big pond and we're we're not speaking from a place that's like we know everything we're like hey guys this is what we're doing this is what's working and mm -hmm. you know and this might it may help you along the journey as well so if you could just real quickly you kind of touched on it share your story with my audience yeah. Um, so for me, I was, uh, you know, I started out working for a farmer's insurance agency uh, here in Redondo Beach, um, Southern California. And I was, you know, 18 years old, fresh out of high school, started working for a farmer's agent. Um, shout out to Wayne for taking me under his wing. He was looking for somebody that could speak Spanish and was a, a Spanish speaker. And Luckily, I, I, my mom is uh, Mexican. She was born and raised in Mexico. So I, you know, learned Spanish. I was, I, I'm a fluent speaker. So um, got a shot at it as an 18 year old, which honestly, the guy rolled, you know, he rolled the dice a little bit on me because you never know with the young 18 year old, what they could, you know, be partying, doing crazy stuff. You never know. So uh, luckily he gave me a shot, um, worked at farmers for about four years. Uh, got a lot of good mentorship, learned the products, learned the ins and outs of the captive agency. And at the end of, you know, the four years I was graduating college, this is all meanwhile, I was in college. And at those end of those four years, I said, either I'm going to go and start my own farmer's agency, or I'm going to go on the independent side. Um, what, you know, kind of came up for me, I was constantly found myself turning away a lot of business that i was you know a little bit of the hairier kind of trickier business that doesn't always fit for like a farmers or like an all-state I just for whatever reason was getting a lot of that and I said okay you know I'm gonna go I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do this on the independent side and try to do this on my own um, which at the time I had no idea what that looked like and how much of a uphill battle and challenge it was going to be but I said you know I'm, I'm at this point I'm 21 years old 22 roughly and I'm going to, I'm going to get it going. So I, I decided to launch my own agency. Um, it's called Adelphia insurance. I started that back in 2018. So we're now approaching the fourth year in, in business and um, yeah, it's been a pretty good ride so far. We're, you know, growing every single month and uh, just trying to learn from other successful agents and, you know, document my process. So I appreciate it, Nick. Thank you. I'm learning a lot from you too, man. Like I've watched some, a lot of these A1s too. So uh, it's cool to be on here and hopefully bring some value as well. Yeah, for sure. So that was actually one of my questions uh, mm -hmm. because that's where we differ. And that's where you can add a, a ton of value to my audience that 
I know a lot of my audience is people either just getting their PNC license or uh, uh, working for an agency or they just started their own or they want they're working for an agency and they're like I want to open up an agency whether that's you know a, a captive agency or an independent you said that you chose the indie route to have a little bit more yeah. control of the business that you can write. And I totally feel that. You know how much business I turned down because Allstate yeah. doesn't have the appetite for a commercial. Um, can you talk about what, uh, what, went in, what went into that decision? And then I'd love to know the process. Like if you can give like a step-by-step, -step, like how, how did that happen? How did you start your agency? Yeah, I mean, the actual process... Um step-by-step step, uh, is a very tricky process. There's not a lot of information out there on how to start up an independent insurance agency. The ironic part is that's the only reason I even got remotely any um, attention on YouTube is because I, I realized, okay, this, there's nothing that exists. Like no video, I you know Google it, search it on YouTube. Um, at the time in 2018, there was nothing on how to start an independent insurance agency. So I recorded myself in my little green wall office and said, Hey, you know, this is step one, you get your DBA, you get your business license, you get your errors and omissions, you do, you know, sign up with an alliance or go try to get appointments, whatever you got to do. There's a very tricky, unclear process that I kind of laid out step by step in a six minute video where my caller was like this and like my, I had no microphone. <laughs> and I just, dude, it was, it was a lame, very bad video, but it ended up for whatever reason, got some attention. And um, so, yeah, just needless to say, it's, it's a tricky process. It's not very straightforward. There's several moving parts. And the main thing, and the trickiest part about it is getting um, direct appointments and contracts with companies. So like going out to travelers or Safeco or, you know, all these big insurance companies, and saying, hey, we're a reputable agency. We want to get a contract with you and we want to sell your products. They're going to turn around and be like, who are you? Why should we let you write our products? What is your volume? Let's look at all your, let's let's open up the hood. Let's take a look at everything and say, are you guys legit? Um, what, kind of, what kind of business are you writing, et cetera? And uh, that's the trickiest part about it. So um, figured it out. There's, there's a couple ways around it. Um, it's kind of a lengthy process, but that's pretty much it. And that's, yeah, luckily I figured it out. And I said, if I'm ever going to mess this up, I'd rather do it when I'm like 21 or 22 than when I'm like, you know, 45. So Did you say that you, you have to fly out there to like their headquarters. No, 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 no. You don't have to fly out to the headquarters. There's reps for each company. Like travelers will have, let's say a rep for Southern California and this, you know, area. And, um, you have to, at the time it was like, well, no, that was pre COVID. Um, no, we don't have to like fly out and meet them. Okay. We just have like, you know, phone calls and they inter basically interview you as an agent say, are you gonna, you know, why should we allow you to sell our products? And that's the hardest part. Like that's the trickiest part about being an independent agent is like getting the products, honestly. And, yeah. and then also maintaining it too, right? Because if you don't write a certain amount, they can cancel your, uh, what is it, contract? Appointment. Yeah, it's called an appointment. So yeah, that's true. Um, I've personally, well, I mean, yeah, when you just don't write their products, if it's something you don't like to use, um, they just cancel your appointment. Um, it's only happened maybe like once to me. I think we have like 20 something appointments at this point. It just, we don't even know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that can happen. I think that's one of the beauties of being an independent agent over uh, a captive agent is two uh -huh. things is that you have a lot more control and retention because if somebody leaves, let's just put you under here. Uh, or, yeah. and you know, you're in full control, whereas a captive agency, it's a little bit, it's way easier to get started. You know, it's way easier to, to, to focus on the driving right. aspects of your business. Um, but you have more control and more flexibility with the indie world. And, um, for sure. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you're touching on a lot of that stuff because, uh, that stuff I don't know about yet. So, yeah. And Nick, I'll tell you, dude, it's, it's, the grass is always greener, like with, you know, it sounds great. Like captive has, you know, it's very easy to get started, but it has, it's, you know, there's, you don't have the options, you know, independent world, terrible to start up. We have more flexibility. 
and then there's it's also it's nightmares on the accounting and like some of the other internal processes that I don't want to explain and get into too much but there's each one has and I understand both very well like they both are grass is always greener for sure yeah. so well I think once you can get the foundation and the uh the foundation and the structure built out for an indie agent, I think the upside is so high because you can write these big commercial policies. You can write these big trucking yeah. companies and, and, yeah. um, and so, yeah. Um, so can you offer any advice to, to somebody that, you know, that, that is working at and how does some, how does one determine whether or not, running an agency is for me or not, or maybe they're meant to just stay working for an agency. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and it's something I get fearful of too, because like I, I was telling you earlier, before we got on the call, people ask me all the time, like, Hey, Chris, like I saw your videos, like, I'm super excited. I want to get going. Like I'm going to start my agency. And, um, you know, I think there's certain aspects and, and characteristics that you need to have as a as a business owner you probably know nick because you probably you've, you've seen you know the different responsibilities that you take on uh as uh, the actual owner first of all keeping it a successful business and profitable you know you have to have the drive the effort the time the energy the commitment to the business um, you know, let's just say it's building teams, hiring and firing, like that takes its own set of emotional, uh, intelligence and, uh, you know, demand on you a little bit, like firing is not fun. Um, having, you know, even the say, like the, 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 uh, operational mindset of how to put the pieces together and where to put, you know, drive, you're in the driver's seat. So, you have to really kind of look inside and say, Hey, you know, do I want to commit to something that's going to be uh, significantly more difficult and demanding than just sitting in the chair and making sales and making a great living? Yeah. Versus, and, and does that itch, like, do you have that itch? Like if that's really kind of something that's on your mind that you're thinking about constantly, then you should go try it, you know, like go for it. I, I would, I'm not trying to discourage people. Like if you feel it and you're having that the same thought feeling kind of coming up, go for it. Like you should really go after it. And um, you never know, like it could be, you could be amazing yeah. and it could be the thing that changes your life. But I if you feel, same, yeah. I think at the same time, there's nothing wrong with being Chris's right-hand man making mm -hmm. 100, 200 K a year someday, you know? Totally. Yeah. Like an entrepreneur, like not an entrepreneur, like you're in the business, but you're basically you know, you're the right hand for sure. I agree. That's definitely a, a good way to, to put it too. like number two, there's yeah. definitely number twos and threes and fours out there. And like the number two of Facebook or Apple, like they're, they're doing pretty well right now, you know? So, right. and without <laughs> any of the risk and stuff like that. So, right. Yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty sure, but, but having an insurance agency is, uh, is very rewarding. And I think, I see you travel yeah. a lot. I'm pretty sure. I don't know about you, but not having to ask for time off is really freaking cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to do that? Let's go. You know, so. Yeah. No, so, that's true. But it also hurts pulling yourself away. Like when you're tied so hard, you just, yeah, it's, I don't know if you feel that when I leave, I'm just like, oh shoot. Like, it's almost like leaving your baby, you know, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting yeah. better at it. <laughs> so no, I got a couple questions for you. Uh, can yeah. you talk about maybe an aha moment where things really started clicking for you? Uh, yeah, an aha moment. Uh, hmm. I would say that throughout the, it's been a gradual aha for me, honestly, man. Like I've been, I've been constantly just failing and making mistakes and whether there was an aha moment, I don't know if there was exactly. I think, um, you know, going after the big stuff, I think there was definitely a few times where I realized, okay, early on I was selling these kind of small policies and I just was in my comfort zone. And I realized at one point, probably in the first six to 12 months that the process and the amount of work and effort that it takes to sell a large 
policy that's even close to six figure range isn't that much different than what it takes to sell a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar policy. So I, I think that was an aha moment where I was like, wait a minute, business owners, these big, you know, companies, big accounts, they need to spend this money one way or the other. Like they're gonna spend this money. So it might as well be with me as their agent, you know. So I think once that started to click and I started to I kind of unlocked the uh I guess that governor that like some, whatever was holding me back from going after big stuff. Um, that was an aha moment. And I'm still, honestly, I'm still in the works of trying to go after bigger and bigger things that are um, my ceiling, pushing my ceiling up. So yeah, there's been, once those big accounts go through, that's the real times when you're like, Whoa, like this is actually possible. So yeah, I would say when I got my like first six figure account, I was like, wow, that's dude, that's awesome. Like that was, I couldn't believe it. That's good stuff. That's amazing. I think a lot of times the bigger deals just intimidate us when you're absolutely right. It's just the mm -hmm. same exact work. It's just a, a couple commas in there, you know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean you shouldn't mess up. That means you better be very on top of it, right? <laughs> for sure. Yeah, more chips on the table for sure. And, uh, you know, in those cases, likely there's, there's a reason why it's more expensive. If something goes wrong, there's more at stake. So you got to definitely prioritize those and put some attention on them so okay without going into too much detail can you talk about some of the mistakes that you've made where you're like oh whew, i'm glad i learned that you know to help other agents that maybe may make the same mistakes yeah i think there's uh you know there's a there's a lot of mistakes i've made uh like i said it's been a you know constant you know gradual just mistake after mistake is um that I've made, but for, to give you one that just stands out to me the most off the top, you know, top of my head, I would say, um, you know, one thing is getting those big accounts and then there's also keeping those big accounts. So I've lost some really big accounts, even in the last couple of weeks. Um, I also put out a video, I don't know if you saw it on, I put it on YouTube, but I talk about how I lost a six figure uh, policy and it was, this is this month um, that I should have had a nice commission in my, uh, you know, in my bank account, but I didn't get it. Uh, and the reason was because I led with a mindset of, of just trying to match price and match coverage and just be the cheaper guy and come in with a better, you know, cheaper, better product when I didn't lead with really being an expert and prioritizing, protecting this client and protecting their business and asking even going deeper into, you know, maybe this, this is a potential, you know, exposure or have you thought about this? Have you considered this? I didn't go there. Like I was more focused, like, okay, what do we got to do to win this account? You know, you want a cheaper price, you want to match coverage, let's do it. And I just went that route. So I think my biggest, this is a great learning lesson, um, even years in, and it's a reminder for even agents that have been in the business for many years, always focus on protecting your customer and leading with the coverage and being an advisor and your price does not matter. The client ended up going with another guy that was more expensive and we had the exact same quote. So oh, that's, um, that's brutal. Is, yeah, it is what it is, man. You, uh, I, I, there's a lot of factors. Like I could easily go into say, you know, feel bad for myself and blame, you know, the, the communication or even like blame other stuff. But really the most important thing is to reflect like what, where did it go wrong for me? And why didn't I get this account? And yeah. biggest mistake, um, not, you know, prioritizing being an expert and advisor. So yeah, that's what I would say. That was a huge shift for me too, brother, uh, where in my first three years, we sold off a of price. Like we literally had, we used to have a lead in where it's like, Hey, if we can't save you money, we won't even call you back. Oh my God. Like I, like I think about that. I'm like, Oh, did you have that in there? We used to like <laughs> in our, our first couple of years. Like we, we would, we would call people and literally lead in with that. Like, what well, you know, like if they're oh. like, no, I don't, I don't got time right now. Look, well, look, if we can't, if we can't get you a better deal, we won't even call you back. And and I'm like cringing to that stuff now because yeah. we we lead with liability, we lead with the right coverages, and not everyone cares about that stuff. But we're gonna at least do our job. We're at For least sure. doing our part because I don't want to sign off on a policy where somebody wasn't educated. 
on on right. potential risks and stuff like that. So I think every every one of us is guilty and ha- and has transitioned yeah. and, and pivoted from from those mistakes because we're all guilty of that. So that's a great lesson, and it's exciting to see what you're going to do with it for every account moving forward. Now, right. here uh, two more questions, and then uh, I'm going to sure. let you go. How has YouTube or mm-hmm. your so or social media has how how has it helped grow your agency? Whether that's through finding people to want to come work with you or uh, clients, has it helped you in any way? It's a good question, honestly, Nick. Not really. Like it doesn't hasn't really done su- like you know a bunch. I think it's connected me with other agents. It's given me good exposure as an as an agent um, nationwide. Um, that leads to occasional referrals but dude straight up honestly man like not like i haven't gotten a lot of you know leads or clients from youtube most of the time it's people watching trying to learn about how to be a good agent anyway so got it that's i'm not really getting a ton of stuff it's good content i think just overall the brand i can't put a number on like the branding aspect of it like what it's done so it's a really hard for me to say there um but just to be like transparent like direct post a video, get a couple leads that week or something. No, like it hasn't done gotcha. much, but I still like it. I think it's just good to bring value. And I have a, my gut tells me like in the long run, it'll be cool to look back and watch my own stuff. Maybe or my great, great grandkids are going to be like grandpappy. Chris is just crushing it in insurance like yeah. back in 2022. Yeah. Um, maybe they'll even see this. That'll be funny. <laughs> Chris, the fourth, you know, opening, <laughs> opening an insurance agency, watching the blueprint. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's good. Well, that's cool. Um, I think uh I think how about you though? Has it helped you? Like, is it you really getting like leads on stuff and or, or I, branding, you know? I, I know that it has helped me. Well, I I have I have posted so much content and I'm not afraid to. I think it's very important to have a brand on face. I think Facebook has been very helpful. I've a ton of referrals from Facebook, Instagram. Yeah not as good as Facebook, but when I build this brand and I'm posting positivity and I'm posting, you know, a couple funny, a couple funny things, um, when I'm uh-huh. constantly posting just good vibes, I would say for sure, for sure. Mix that with, Hey guys, call me for a quote. And then I celebrate every little success of our agency. I think it captures eyeballs and it has helped from a branding standpoint, yes, we'll get a couple uh, referrals, we'll get a couple of phone calls, but it mainly helps with if an insurance, if another insurance office, and we we want to partner up with another insurance office or a mortgage office or a loan office mm-hmm. uh, or a car dealership, it helps. It doesn't hurt. It it, it right. certainly helps uh, totally. build that trust with partnering with us. Um, versus the insurance agent that they don't see or don't know about or can't google but right. deeper than that i would say that the branding and social media mm-hmm. has helped me find candidates and attract candidates that i typically wouldn't have gotten otherwise right to hire you're saying to hire yeah so when gotcha. somebody googles me they can take a look at my agency culture and think okay this is a cool office Right. This is Bob that's hiring down the street and you can't find nothing on him. You know, he's that right. traditional old insurance agent. Right. And so I think it helps in that respect. But um, but I know what you're saying. I don't think YouTube has helped me. If anything, I'm just attracting. It's kind of like I'm just attracting more insurance agents. It's kind of like that, <laughs> that that meme where it's like gym bros, gym bros go to the gym to try, you know, to get buff to a pool girls but in an actuality they're only attracting other guys like damn bro nice, bi- nice biceps you know <laughs> Dude, exactly exactly no yeah that's a good point though the the hiring aspect of it nick i didn't honestly i didn't think of that like i have gotten several people that call and they'll say like hey like you know i'm trying to work for an agency or i would love to even like start a i've heard people say i want to start a branch of your agency in another state Ooh. stuff like that has come up a couple different times where they say even like if you help me start up i'll give you a split of like 50 percent of everything i write i've just turned them everything down just because i'm not in a position i feel like i need to get my agency right before i go and start you got launching something yeah you gotta, you gotta build the golden arches of your mcdonald's before you start 
you know, like the whole, I don't know if you've ever seen the founder, like yeah, yeah. document every little process from like the speed to the tomatoes, the pickles and all that. Stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I need to get, I need to get us dialed in first. So we'll I, see maybe well, in the future. I, I've, I've seen so much progress from you just in the last year of knowing you. So there's no doubt in my mind that you're going to scale your whole operation in a big way, man. So I'm just, thank you. I'm just, I'm just happy to be uh, a friend of yours at the very beginning. For sure. Thank so, you, man. I appreciate it. Chris, my last question before I let you go is a question I ask yeah. everybody. Uh, the title of my, this show is A1 Agents. And when I look up the definition of A1, it's to the highest of standards and the highest of principles. Mm -hmm. If you could, could you tell my audience three standards or principles that you either live your life by or run your agency by? You could pick one or the other, or, you know, maybe they're the same, but, you know, what are some, what are three standards you, you, you kind of live by or run your agency by? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you one about the agency that I, uh, that I, this one's like person. I don't always like say it to the, to the team. I do say it to the team from time to time, but one of the things is, um, you never hide from a customer. So, um, there's always, I mean, especially in insurance, you deal with so many, you know, pissed off people, you deal with people, you know, it happens like stuff happens in insurance and, um, you don't dodge people. You don't like hide from them and you face stuff head on. If you made a mistake, if there's something that's wrong with their insurance, if their rates went up, if their policy canceled, you face it head on and you, and you address it and with integrity. Um, that's one I like to have, you know, for the agency. Um, another one personally, uh, is you always, uh, this is something my dad used to say to me when I was a kid, um, is, uh, you always go the extra mile. So, and that's a pretty cliche and common one, but I, I like to, I think that's also what separates good agents and, and, and bad and, and average agents, not bad ones, average ones, because the guy who's willing to, you know, go and make that extra call to their lender or to their, you know, to make sure that everything's in place for their homeowner's policy or to help them out with giving them the right claims number and, and getting them in touch with the claims adjuster, like the little, the small stuff, just going the extra mile, like that really takes an extra two, three minutes of your day right. um, are the small things that can, that just make people say like, that's some good service. That guy's, that's a quality company. I want to work with Chris or Nick. Uh, and, and um, that's another one. And then uh, I don't know, this is another one that just came off the top of my head. Um, another one, my dad would always say to me, uh, the squeaky wheel gets greased. The squeaky wheel always gets greased. Um, so that's just basically, you know, if the, the, the wheel is making some noise and it's squeaky, it's going to get greased. So if, essentially, you know, if you want something, you got to speak up and you got to, you know, say what you want. And um, you want the big customer, you want the big accounts, you want the successful agency, whatever it is, um, you got to make some noise and go out and make it happen and call the customer, um, put in the work and do the stuff. So yeah, those are my three. Love it, man. Love it. Well, Chris, thank you so much for your time. I just want to acknowledge you for how genuine you are, man. That's the vibe that I get from you without ever even jumping on this call. And you, thank have, you. A, you have a genuineness about you that, you know, builds a lot of trust. Uh, with people and your passion for the insurance industry and what you're doing. Like <clears throat> it's not, I, for one, no, it's not easy mm -hmm. to rob our agency and our team of, <clears throat> of our time to put out this content, to help people. Like, right. This takes work to, to sure. do this stuff. And the fact that you're, you're taking that time uh, to spread the love, to spread the knowledge and wisdom that you have already um, have gone through and are going through um, it just says a lot about who you are. So, so thank you, man. And um, if pe my audience wants to follow you, how do they find yeah. you on, uh, on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you're found? Yeah, you could pretty much find me on uh, the, the social medias, uh, whatever one, um, as Chris, the insurance guy. So uh, pretty straightforward. Instagram, Chris, the insurance guy. TikTok, Chris, the insurance guy. YouTube, if you type in Chris, the insurance guy, I think I pop up. Uh, so yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. But Hey, Nick wanted to say thank you so much too, man. Um, I look up to you too. I know you've, you've been doing some great stuff and uh, let me know if you're out in California, would love to, you know, take you out to dinner, lunch, 
and uh yeah keep this going man I, I really do appreciate it seriously heck yeah man well same thing when you're in vegas yeah we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen we gotta have a uh a, a, a dinner in cali with you dan and get yeah a, get a little mastermind going on dude that would be awesome yeah that'd be that'd be that'd be super cool sounds good man well thank you chris for sure thank you